Hey guys, today I have a special guest with me. This is Lewis from A Level Physics Online and he's going to talk to us, or you rather, about his top tips for revising A Level Physics. So, what are your top tips for revising A Level Physics? Okay, um, there's really no secret to be honest. I mean, it's probably the same as all of your other subjects. You've just got to get on and do it. Um, I found that often the students who, who did the best in the exams they weren't the ones making the most pretty timetables. They weren't the students who were just, you know, writing out their notes really neatly and highlighting things. They were students who just got on with it and sometimes their notes were a bit messy. And actually, there wasn't really kind of one thing that anybody did. You know, looking at probably all the students I've taught over the last few years, sometimes you had students who were really lazy, they were really messy, they didn't keep on top of their notes, and they did really well. Um, equally, there's some students who I suppose they did everything right and they just found it kind of quite hard because they didn't spend enough time actually practicing questions and I think that's probably the key to it you've just got to spend the time doing question after question after question yeah so what would be the best place that they can find loads and loads of practice questions so um, one place you've got is a load of past paper banks so although the, the courses that you're probably doing at the moment there's probably a few past papers available there's loads and loads of past exam papers uh, and this is from the old specification and this is where it's a bit tricky because although the physics hasn't changed sometimes what they ask you in the exams has so there might be topics which uh, come up and you think oh, I'm no, I don't know anything about uh, you know this particular topic but that's fine and if you know what you need to know so if you've read the specification you've maybe got a learning checklist and you're kind of sort of ticking off everything as you're going through it then you know what you should be learning about I guess you, sort of, you need to have these known knowns I suppose and as you do more and more past papers, you'll find that certain questions sort of crop up all the time. And this probably takes up the bulk of the paper, so there's going to be loads and loads of easy marks there. You know, definitions, uh, maybe rearranging certain equations or, uh, you know, maybe showing the proof of something. It's just a staple question and you've got to get those marks. And that maybe gets you to like maybe a D or maybe a C level, A level. Um, but to really kind of understand the topic, you know, this is why A level is a lot more difficult than GCSE. To really understand the topic you've got to have this depth of knowledge about everything and see how everything fits together. So you need to know how mechanics maybe works with electric, electricity, for example. You need to know how that then maybe looks at electric fields and magnetic fields. And there's probably a point, maybe probably about a week before your exams in year 13, where everything, everything kind of suddenly clicks. And you think, oh, that's why we did this, that's why we learned this. And you get to that point just by putting in the time and doing as many past papers as possible. So I know loads of you are really concerned about how do you actually know what it is that you need to know. So where would you suggest people got this knowledge checklist from? Yeah, so um, the exam boards have specifications and this is very much a document for teachers. So it's written by the exam board, by a load of people in an office. It gets published. Teachers kind of read it at some point and there's all information there about, you know, how to, uh, you know, how to kind of enter candidates for exams all of this kind of stuff that's just irrelevant for most of the people who actually need to look at it. So on my website, which is A Level Physics Online, um, what I did is I kind of took the specification, I kind of copied it and kind of made it more student friendly and I kind of did that by topic. So you can basically go to my website, um, it's quite cool actually, if you just Google A Level Physics, I'm the kind of top result, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you go there um, and then depending on which exam board you're doing, I've kind of got these exam uh, sort of revision checklists for each topic. So if you're doing mechanics, you just kind of print it out and just kind of, it's pretty straightforward, you just kind of sort of tick off as you're doing each, each thing. And if there's something there that you don't understand, that's the time to maybe look in your textbook to actually speak to your teachers because teachers are quite good at this subject and they're, you know, they're paid to help you in your subject. So if there's something that you don't understand, often just a, you know, 30 second kind of conversation with your teacher and they'll say, oh, it's, we did this. And then it's like, oh yeah, that's that what it is. Yeah. Because um, sometimes uh, the actual language is quite difficult. So, and this, this can be done probably now. You don't need to wait till you're on study leave. If you kind of get these revision checklists, you kind of start looking through them you'll hopefully identify the things that you have actually learnt in the last couple of years as you've been doing your course. And anything that you're not clear about, you then realise that that's the kind of stuff you've got to concentrate on learning. You guys know I am a big, big fan of knowledge checklists that you can tick off and you can colour in, so definitely go and download those. Yeah, and yeah, this is for the A-star candidates as well. You know, there's no kind of magic thing of, you know, some people are just super clever. The people who tend to do well, it's because they spend this time preparing and sometimes it's a bit boring and it's just... You know, you're just reading through statements and you're ticking off if you know it or not. 
but all of that time it's all it's all really useful i'm always telling you that questions 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 are the most important thing you can do and if you've done all of the questions from your exam board where else can they go for more questions yeah so if you're doing aqa physics for example there's only going to be a you know a sort of limited quantity of questions which are available so there's two good places you can go uh, the first one is isaac physics um this is a a massive project which is run by the University of Cambridge because they've really realised that I guess lots of people doing A-level physics, you know, they're really good at A-level but when it comes to university they can somehow struggle. And so they've got uh, a big website which has got thousands of questions and you can choose it by difficulty so you can go from uh, sort of level 2, level 3 which is kind of year 12 up to level sort of 4 and 5. And if you're really uh, wanting the challenge, you can do level six as well, but a lot of them are kind of too, too difficult for me to do, actually. <laughs> um, but that really does kind of make your mathematical ability a, a lot stronger. So Isaac Physics is really good. Um, the other thing is to go to different exam boards. So if you're doing AQA Physics, then have a look at OCR, because, again, probably about 80% of the course is exactly the same. And that means if you've got questions from AQA about mechanics and SUVAT and you know, projectile motion, OCR are going to have the same amount of questions on the same topic. Now, they might use slightly different notation or slightly different letters for different things, but, you know, 80% of it is going to be exactly the same. And once you've done OCR, do Edexcel and then EDUCAS and WJC. I mean, there's thousands of questions out there and every year they're being added to. And the more that you can do, the more you get kind of used to the way that exams work, the kind of, you know, the amount of marks per question. And yeah, it's just down to you to kind of just sit there and do question after question. And the important thing isn't to do questions until you can get them right, it's trying to do the questions until you can't get them wrong. And if you think about that, then you just got to keep practising and practising and practising. That is brilliant and brilliant advice. Cool. So you guys, definitely go and check out Able Physics mm. Online. Yeah, so if you'd like to have a look at my website or my YouTube channel, uh, click here to subscribe. Is that a good place? <laughs> sure. uh, and, if and if you want to see uh, another cat video with my kitten called Muon, uh, please have a click down here. Thank you. I'll make that happen. <laughs>